All right, so some people over on the Facebook group for the Sonic Pad have been having issues connecting their printers. So I thought I'd make a quick little video. I'm about to hook up my fourth printer, a little Aquila over here that I've mounted a 4.2.7 board in. Uh, I still haven't figured out Clipper all the way. I haven't figured out how to make my own stuff, my own config files, my own bin files, all that. I've uh, definitely been using this Sonic Pad as a crutch, which is okay for now. I'll figure it out eventually. Uh, the one thing I'll say is this came, so my Sonic Pad came with an 8 gigabyte thumb drive. Tried tearing the back out, but nothing, I couldn't get this gray part to budge. Uh, as far as I can see, it's just a normal thumb drive. I did not get an SD card reader. Uh, I tried a few. I finally found one from another machine that was compatible. Uh, this is what I use now to get the bin files to the printers. Um, alternatively, you can put it on the thumb drive, move that to the computer, uh, put it from the thumb drive to your micro SD card, and go from there. Alright, so let's get started. So we're going to go, I'm going to go to another printer. Right now I've got two under three V2s, one with, one, one with ABL, one without, an under six, uh, with a BL touch. Yeah, so we're going to add a add new device. Gosh, that's kind of hard to read, huh? Yeah, there it goes. Add new device. We've only got one USB port left. So this says choose. Trust me, it says choose. It's just blown out. And then here's where I see people get hung up. You need to know what board is in your printer. Like specifically, you see here, these say uh, STM32F401V blah, 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 right? Um, there's going to be different boards for different machines, or maybe you had to replace a board. Maybe you wanted it, your printer to be quieter, so you had an Ender 3v2 with a 4.2.2, and you moved it to the 4.2.7. Uh, all that is important, and sometimes it's even more important if you've got, again, the sub numbers, right? Some of them just say 4.2 point whatever, 4.3 point whatever. Uh, some of them specifically say specific ones. I've got mine written down right here just in case I needed it. Mine is an STM32 F103RET6. So that's what I'm going to look for here. Uh, F103. So these do say 4.2.7. STM 32F103 4.2.7. Yeah. I'm just going to try the 4.2.7. And the sub issue here is that even 4.2.7 has different, there, there's different things, there's different drivers, excuse me, uh, depending on the make and when it was made. Some will have uh, noisy drivers, believe it or not. I've seen people report some noisy drivers in some of their 4.2.7s. Um, and that depends on a little number that they'll write on the SD card reader itself. But even then, there's only a handful of them that have actually been mapped and figured out what they are. Mine was a weird one. It was like T5 or something like that. It was on the SD card reader. And it wasn't written by hand with a marker like normal. It was a sticker. So we're going to go with 
sorry, I'm rambling, 4.2.7 with ABL. All right, then we're going to come down here. Next step. I'm going to take my micro SD card, put it in the slot. Doing this one handed is a bit of a pain in the butt. Make sure I don't hit the power button. That wouldn't help. All right, give that a second to do its thing. All right, now it's red. Flash firmware. Firmware has been written to the memory card. Please insert it into the printer. Make sure the printer is switched off when inserting. That's another big thing. Make sure it's switched off when inserting. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click next step while I do this next part. Let's see if I can't do all this on camera. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and Stick the micro SD card in here. All right, power the printer on. Do I have it plugged in? Wow, it might help if it was plugged in the back. Hold on, y'all are gonna enjoy the dark view, darkness for a minute. All right, now we're plugged in. Ugh. Ooh, I need to change that fan. Ah, the bearing went out on that fan. I have been lazy. I don't want to whack it a few times and it shuts up. All right, so give that a few seconds. And let's get our cord plugged in. Please power on the printer and click next. Next, all right. So here's the point to where it wants us to plug the cord in to the machine. We got the last USB port on this plugged in and plug it into the printer. I don't know if this is a data cord. Oh, I didn't think that went through. May have to pause the video and come back. Oh, there it goes. Connect, connected successfully. Next step. The firmware has been flashed successfully. All right, now we're gonna do self-test, which plenty of other people have this, but we can run through it real quick. Uh, ooh, one thing I wanted to point out. Okay, so I also see people having problems with... Sorry about the dog in the background. He's not getting attention, so he's whining. Uh, I also see people have problems with uh, some probe offsets and Z offsets and whatever, whatever. Uh, unplug your screens. Unplug the screen. Unplug the original stock screens, the Ender 3 V2 screens, off and that should solve your issue uh that's what i had to do for mine i picked that up where did i pick that up i don't remember where i picked it up but there were, yeah i remember not being able to figure it out somebody said unplug the screen it's sending a back signal of some sort B boom solved it all right so let's start the self test so fan yes we know that noisy thing is on uh blower fan that's on. Uh, prepare Z axis and offset. Okay, I'm not doing that. My bed's already level. I'm just going to have it do the auto leveling. All right, so now we're back to where we were. Maybe just put that right there. 4.99. Well, I live life on the edge. Let's just go down all the way. Nope. Nowhere near. We need to go negative. So here's another uh, point that I see people having issues with. And... That's that in the config file you need to add, because I don't know why Creality didn't have it there. Uh, for your Z, you need to add a minimum, which we'll get on that in a minute. Um, let me take care of this real quick. Well, you know what? Maybe people want to see it. Who knows? 
I'm not gonna cut any of this. I'm too lazy. So still, we're still way up there, right? So let's go down by a millimeter at a time until that catches. Oof, we're way up there. I mean, you do adjust some things. I didn't realize this was that. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's go up. This is all going to need to be redone when it's warm anyways. Let's go by half. Okay, got the dog to start barking. And we're about where I would like it. Hold anyways. Just enough to drag. All right. Now we can do next step. Did I mess that up? I'm not doing manual level. There we go. Okay, so let's bring the bed temperature up to 65. See, I kind of wish I could skip all this for now, because um, I wanted to run the PID and stuff. So, yeah, this is going to get warm, and then it'll start probing points, just like a BL Touch or CR Touch does. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video for that, and we'll come back when it's done. And here's another reason why I want to do stuff in the config file before it does this. Oh, you're not going to make a big noise now. Well, it crashed into the side a minute ago. Yeah, it's not the best bed level ever, but it's good enough for government work. Again, not the best, not the worst. It'll be fine. Congratulations, your printer is in perfect blah blah blah. Alright. So, that's about how you get it set up. Uh... I'll cover more stuff in the future. I think that's good enough for this video. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And if you have any questions, shoot them down below. Catch you later.